Hi everyone, Jan here. Let's build Shopify. And today you will learn everything about how to get started with Shopify sections and how you can use them to create new settings and new features for your front end customizer. So you're about to learn one of the key concepts in Shopify. Should be a lot of fun. Let's go. All right. As a starting point for this video, I already went ahead and created two new page templates. The first one is called landing page one. The second one is called landing page two. And this is just a markup that gets auto generated when you create a new page template. Then I went ahead and added two pages, page one and page two, and I applied these templates to the pages. So page one gets landing page one, page two gets landing page two. And we could also view these pages in the live customizer. Right now they look super plain and they don't have any settings in the live customizer. Next, I will go back to my theme files and now I move to the sections folder. And in here we can create a new section and maybe we can call it icons with text create section. And this will generate some code for us as well, but you can remove everything except the schema tag because right now we will focus on that. And you don't have to worry about anything in here. This is just some data written in the JSON format, but we will get to that in a minute. For now, we can just give it a meaningful name and we can give it a different name from the file name so that you can see where the file name matters and where this one will come into play. So for now, we could do icons with text above or something and then save the new section. And for now we can leave the section as it is, but we will include it in our landing page templates. So below the page content, I will do a curly bracket followed by percentage sign and then section. And now the file name matters. So icons dash with dash text, and there's no need for the liquid extension. And then percentage sign curly bracket. And I will just copy this, save the file, and add it to the second landing page template as well. And after a quick page refresh on the front end, you would already see our new section, icons with text above, available in the customizer. But right now the settings are empty because we didn't add anything. But I hope you get the idea that the schema tag, or more precise, the JSON data within that schema tag, is related to what is being displayed in the customizer. And now we have to talk about JSON a little bit more. Okay, so first of all, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And that means it's a structured way to write out objects. And in the real world, you all know what an object is, but in the context of programming, an object in the simplest form is just a meaningful collection of data. And to introduce you to this concept, I prepared two examples. And the first one is the object student. So we would start with a pair of curly brackets to enclose the object. And now we have to think of a set of data that would represent a student in a meaningful way. And most likely the student would have a name, it could be Johnny, and he might be 18 years old, and his student ID might be 12345, and he would also have a collection, or an array if you want, of different subjects. And the collection is always indicated through these square brackets, while the object is indicated through these curly brackets. And maybe he would participate in math, English, and biology. So what we are left with is the object student notated in the JSON format. But let's do one more. And the second example I prepared is a little bit more related to Shopify and e-commerce. So we have the object product and we start with a pair of curly brackets again. And now the product might have a title, could be t-shirt, maybe a weight, 200 grams. But then the product would also have a few variants. So a collection of variants, but these variants might be objects themselves. So we could have one object for the red variant and it might have the color red and the price 10. Then we would have one object for the blue variant, maybe color blue and price 11 and the color green and price nine. So you would see now we have a collection of different variant objects, but everything else stays the same like in the first example. Okay, so now we have to transfer everything that we've just learned to Shopify. And as you can see, we have a pair of curly brackets and in between, we will have our new section object. And every section is represented by a name, icons with text above in this case, and a collection of different settings. But we haven't added any settings yet. So this is the next thing we will do. And every setting itself is described with at least three parameters. So I will create a new object, a setting object. And the setting is described through the type. For the first one, we could choose text. And then we would also need a label. This will appear in the customizer. 
So this one could be your headline for the section. And the third parameter is an ID so that we can later uniquely identify this setting. And for now, we could give it the ID heading. Let's add another one. So I will add a comma and then a new pair of curly brackets for the next setting object. And this one could be of type, uh, let's say rich text so that we can see a difference. And the label would be maybe your description. Oops, your description. And we could give it the ID description. Okay, uh, I think we can save this. And after another page refresh on the front end, you will already see the magic happen because inside our section, we should see two new settings, one text field and one rich text field. And we could now enter some test values, maybe test and lorem ipsum, some nonsense text. But what you would see is that these values never appear on the page itself. So the question becomes how we can reference these values. And that's what we're working on now. And therefore we jump back into our section file and on top of the schema tag, I can define some HTML markup. And for simplicity, we could just add a heading level three. And in between, I want to render the headline. So I will drop into liquid and reference the section object, section.settings.heading. So this is the section object. We access the settings and I want to access the setting with the ID heading. Simple as that. And right below, we could add a paragraph for the description. So now I, I will need to render section.settings.description. Let's save it and give it a try. And after the next page refresh, we would see that our values do appear on the front end and we could even update the value live. But there's one thing I want you to note, and that is that on our second landing page, the value would be exactly the same as on the first one. And that is due to the reason that we implemented our section as a so-called static section and we include it in both templates. And these static sections can only have one global value. And the counterpart would be a dynamic section. We will get to that in a second. But before I want to show you something else, because right now we only have two static text fields. But what if the user wants to upload a few images, but I don't know how many, then I would need to make this extendable in some way. And therefore I go back to editing our section file. And now I will add some dynamic blocks to our section. And this will be a collection of blocks again. And a block is defined through a few properties. So it will have a type. We could give it, let's say image for now and it would have a name. We could just name it image block for now so you would see where this appears. And the block would have a few settings on its own. So a block will have a collection of settings. So you can see this can get nested pretty quickly. And for the sake of simplicity, we will only add one single setting to this block. So new settings object. And the type will be image picker image underscore picker. Then the label could just be your image. And the ID would be image, let's say. Save it. And now we check the front end to see what that does. And now you would see that we have a new component here that says add image block and we can add as many image blocks as we want. And for each of these image blocks, I can select one of the uploaded images. I don't know where these are coming from, but we can select them for now. So this one, this one, and this one. And now we will put these out to the front end as well. So on top of our section file, we can now add a for loop. So let's do for every block in our section blocks. And down below, we will end the for loop and for. So for every block, we want to output an image element. 
and the source of that image element should be equivalent to the block.settings.image. And this would actually only return an image object, but what we are interested in is the image URL, because an image object has a few different things, aspect ratio, height, width, URL, and whatsoever. So I will apply a liquid filter on that image URL. And for the size, we will now just grab the master image. Save it. And then you would see that these icons get rendered to the front page. And even if I add a new one, this should appear in a dynamic way. How cool is that? The next powerful thing I want to show you right now is how you can turn this static section into a dynamic section that you can use on your homepage. Because right now you would see that our section does not appear on the customizer if you visit the front page. And actually that's a very easy thing to do. We just go back to our section file and at the bottom we will add a new parameter which is called presets. And this will be a collection again. And the presets object is very simple. We will just give it a category and a name. So we can start with category. We could just type image here. It doesn't really matter what you type in here. And the name would be, let's say, icons with text. Then we can save this. And now you would find our new section right in the front end customizer. So it's icons with text. And you could add this section as many times as you want. I already went ahead and added it twice. And now I can drag and drop it around on the page. And all the sections are independent from each other. So this is purely dynamic. And now our new section would require some styling. But I wanted to keep this tutorial as lean as possible. So you can easily follow along. And I think by now you have a solid foundation to start building your own sections. But before we bring this video too close, let me give you my three best advice on how to work with them. So first of all, I will add a link to the video description where you could read about all the different types of settings that you can add to your new section. So in this video, we use text, rich text and image picker, but actually there are a lot more. For example, we have color picker, range slider, drop downs, check boxes, and here you will get a good overview. The second advice is to use an editor with better formatting and better syntax highlighting. So for example, I like to use Visual Studio Code. And if I would have the same file in here, I could just highlight all the JSON code and I could just beautify the selection and now it will get cleaned up. But actually I use the Shopify editor so everyone would be able to follow along. But usually I would use Visual Studio Code. The third advice is maybe the most powerful I can give you. Because whenever you're writing some JSON by hand, it is very likely that you make a mistake at one point. So for example, I could just forget the comma right here and maybe the quotes right here. And once I try to save this file, Shopify would just say me, okay, it's invalid JSON, but it gives no clue or no hint on where to look for that error. And now it gets pretty hard to debug that schema tag. So I would just copy all of it. And then I would bring this to a JSON validator. And this one is pretty good. I will link it down below. And here you can just validate your JSON and it says, okay, there's a problem in this line. Uh, so I will add a comma right here. And then he says, okay, there's another problem in this line. And I would see, oh, okay, I missed some quotes. And now it becomes valid JSON. So I can easily bring it back to my file. And now I will save it. And you can see without an error, we get the asset saved. All right, that's it for today's video. And I really hope you learned something new. I can imagine that this was quite a lot for the short amount of time, but just let it sit for a while. And if you have questions, you can always ask them down in the comment section. If you enjoy this type of content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And for me, it's time to get outside the house because the weather is beautiful today. I hope you have a good day too. And then I see you in the next. Bye.